Today I'm going to share with you how to pick CRM for your construction business, especially if you're in the roofing space, absolutely must watch video. I'm going to give you five tips, five things, what to watch carefully if you're in the market for brand new CRM for your business. Signing up with CRM is the most important decision you can make for your business. It literally can make or break your business, but also choosing the bad one might hurt you later on or choosing the CRM that will not fulfill your needs or will create bad experience down the road. So it's very important you understand what you're signing up for, what CRM is and what functions it should have. For those of you who are absolutely brand new in business and don't even know what CRM is, it's customer relationship management. It's one platform that helps you organize your relationship with your teammates, people who work for you in your organization, but also your customers. What's happening on every job, that's where you're gonna be logging in calls, that's where you're gonna be signing tasks, that's where you're gonna be setting people for appointments, that's where you're gonna take notes and create specific tasks for different departments in your organization. So that's CRM in the bulk. It's pretty much a glue that holds your entire company together. I personally like to separate my QuickBooks and my accounting softwares from my CRM softwares. They can talk and some people combine them and also CRMs might have functions of accounting uh, softwares but again for me I'm a big fan of keeping money where money belongs and keep relationship and management problems where they belong. So for me CRM is all about managing customers and make your team accountable and other uh, softwares like QuickBooks will help you with the rest of the business stuff. But uh, recently I've been talking to a few companies who had a really bad experience and I'm talking about companies who do 20 million plus and they have major disputes with the known players in the CRM world. As a matter of fact, with the top companies like IQLinks or Job Progress and you know, my first point today is first question that I want you to ask your CRM companies, who's going to control the data? It's the most important question. When you're small, it's not that important, but you're getting in the partnership with the most important software, piece of software that your business will have. When you go in partnership with someone, you have to start thinking about the exit when you enter. I know right now you don't think about it and you think it's going to be fine. I have went through two CRMs in my career and it was a disaster. It's not easy to switch CRM down the road. So, for example, IQLinks controls the data and that's why I absolutely hate IQLinks. I hear a lot of complaints over the years. Many people came to me, uh, they wanted to run a story on IQLinks because when you run 10, 15, 20 million dollar company and you don't control your data, you're hostage to the piece of software. Not all CRMs are like that. CRMs that I recommend don't do that, but there are some players who wants you for life. And I don't think it's ethical. It's probably legal if you have it in writing, if you agree to it, but many business owners don't realize it. So first question you have to ask yourself and ask sales rep and that organization is, will you control the data or they control the data? And what will happen if you decide to go elsewhere? Because think about this, let's say you have 3000 customers in two year period of time and you decided to switch, what's gonna happen to 3000 emails, 3000 notes, 3000 job folders? It's a lot of folders, it's a lot of data. If you cannot export it easily and if you have to uh, go through the hoops and you have to manually do it, I mean, it'll take you years. I know a company who literally paid someone for a year and a half full time, couple hundred bucks uh, a month just to keep their subscription alive, but also paying someone hourly every single day for a year or two to, to export all the data. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of headaches. And the only reason it takes place because company wants to hold you hostage and don't you want you ever leave. And they're probably gonna sue you. They're like a bad ex. You're either with them or something else or they're going to get very it's going to get very nasty and they're not going to give you the divorce so companies like iqlinks operate like that and i'm here just to warn you second area you want to look into 
and ask your sales rep or representative of potential CRM you're considering is what extras do they have and how much those extras are gonna be. For example, let's say CRM is charging you $49 a month per user. Sounds good, you're signing up, you have 20 salespeople, you have 10 people in offices, 30 users. So you're doing quick math, 30 users times, you know, 50 bucks a month, 1500 bucks a month is your bill. Well, then your team decides to upload pictures and CRM is telling you, well, it's gonna be extra $10 per user so now they're charging you another you know 300 bucks just for the function to upload the pictures so now you go from 1500 bucks a month to 1800 bucks a month next you know that you can collect signatures on the contracts on the ipads if you're signing agreements in front of homeowners and crm is telling you well if you wanted that function that's also going to be ten dollars per signature or it's going to be ten dollars per user per month to activate it so now you're not paying 50 bucks you're paying 70 bucks so now you're paying 2100 bucks per month now you want to do now you want to integrate it with the quickbooks now they're telling you it's going to be another 500 bucks per month for quickbooks integration and the list goes on and on and on and you feel like someone is milking you because the company the crm company is looking at you as a milking cow and it's exactly what they're doing so ask those questions ahead of time make sure you understand that back in the day i have this experience with the contractors cloud one of the crms and it's exactly what they did they could not tell me what was happening they could not tell me uh, who turned the feature on they knew we were not using it but we were paying you know 10 bucks a month or something so be careful ask questions way ahead of time and uh, don't get screwed number three you want to ask yourself and do a little research who is behind the brand for example sales salesforce has a lot of crms a lot of companies under them but they're a corporate company they're really big you kind of understand who you're dealing with and it might work but you're gonna have a lot of managers a lot of hoops a lot of bureaucracy so you always want to find out who is behind it some crms are operated by people who were business owners two years ago you know some companies are started by tradesmen so tradesmen have been business build the software for him now sells the software for other to other contractors nothing wrong with it but that relationship is going to be very different than if IT company started a CRM. So who is behind the startup? What kind of character? What kind of ethics? What kind of core values they have will help you if you understand it early on. Because in case of dispute, you know, someone who has all your data can just say, you know what, F off, I don't want to deal with you and you're gonna be on your own. Where if it's someone reputable, someone who you can trust, someone who is very ethical, who I recommend, like for example, I recommend Job Nimbus. One of the reasons I love Job Nimbus, when I used to be a roofing business owner, and we switched to uh, Job Nimbus because I met them at Expos. Same team, same owners, they have three owners, the nicest guys. People who will not do any harm to anyone in their lifetime. You know, those are the people who I want to trust the most sacred part of my business, my customers and my data, because I trust them. But if you have a nasty roofer on the other end who just have no work ethics, just trying to make a dollar, you know, I'm going to be skeptical. I'm going to be a little bit careful. And a lot of storm chasers these days have their CRMs. Nothing to, to say against those storm chasers, but you need to understand that you know that storm chaser now have your data and if for example if you see that person suing everyone if you see that person have tons of disputes in the industry now you are in business with him what do you think is going to happen if you have dispute over billing or over data or over problems with the crm what if your crm disappears for three days and you cannot log in how he's going to resolve it and how you're going to resolve it with him what are you going to do how are you going to get out of it those questions should be asked in the beginning before you sign up not after you sign up and paying them and entering the data for a couple of years which brings me to fourth area is look for lawsuits look for behavior and their arrogance or their attitude in general online and history in the industry i'll give you an example bigger companies who were first adopters you know 
first early leaders, they usually the most arrogant ones. They usually the ones who wants to sue everyone. They hate competition. They, they feel like they're too big to fail. And they feel like because they were first, no one else should um, take from their pie. That's why you will see companies like Oculinks um, dealing with a lot of legal actions, um, threatening people to sue them, a lot of cease and desist letters coming from them. Uh, those companies usually run by lawyers because they are the first in the industry. They usually can afford it. They usually have more money than competition. And you know, if they have most users, you can expect attitude that you're small, they're big, and you don't mess with them. Where if you work with a newer company, newer CRM innovators, those companies usually want to serve you, earn your business the right way. They don't want to bully you. They want to, you know, serve you in the right way. And this is just, it goes in any business, but it's 2022. We have plenty of options, plenty of CRMs, and it's getting harder and harder to navigate. I'm just giving you general rules of thumb, what to look for and what I personally look for in a company before I sign up for new service. And the last one is a strategy. What is your strategy? How big do you want to take your company? I remember one of my, my first CRM in my roofing business was a product by Salesforce. It was very limited, it was very cheap. And I personally didn't have a problem with the service or product, except for the fact it was very limited. So my biggest mistake was it could not do so many things that I needed it to do. So after like three, four months, I actually decided to switch to another company. You have to think about your strategy. If you're a one man show, I would recommend still signing up something bigger. Like again, I recommend Japanese because I cannot think of anything Japanese cannot do, especially in the roofing space. And as a contractor myself for years, you know, before they become partners of Roofing Insights, before we start doing more content together, you know, for years, I was endorsing them to everyone because they never let me down. And, you know, someone like Jeb Nimbus is, can help you when you're a $30 million company or $50 million company, but they also will be there when you're a $1 million company. So think about the strategy. Uh, some people like to use something like Trello, which is a great tool, Canadian company, I think, recently been sold. Trello is free and you, you can definitely build a business, multi-million dollar business on something like Trello. It's, you know, robust, you know, it can do a lot of things, but you will have limitations. It's not going to have your integrations. It's not going to have everything you need it to be. So yeah, you might be saving a few dollars first, second year, but then later when you have a bigger team, when you have bigger agenda and bigger strategy, you will need someone in your corner who understands your business and who can help you with the next big thing, next idea, next milestone. And for that reason, I recommend someone like Jab Nimbus. So you can become, you know, Heath Hicks switched to Job Nimbus when he was doing way over 20 million, I think 30 million from another CRM. And I talked to him at last expo in Florida just uh, one month ago and I asked him, do you still like it? Because I have not talked to him for two years. Two years ago, he made a switch and it was very important to me is after he made a switch, does he still like it? And uh, I remember Heath Hicks told me something that I will never forget. He said, Dmitry, you know, after you do like 10, 15 million dollars, it doesn't really matter. You can make almost any CRM work. You can build your custom CRM. And he, he was very happy with the job numbers, but your problem is not going to be CRM at that size. You will make executive decisions. Your biggest agenda will be just to keep the machine running. Make sure you don't have a major problems. Make sure you have someone on your team or on your speed dial who will fix your problems. And that's why having a solid CRM grown company always will help you. So comment below what you think about this edition. Uh, I also want you to think about CRMs, about their exit strategy. A lot of companies are in business just to sell. They don't have your best interest, they have their best interest because it's, it's very good business for big players and you know just recently we've seen job progress selling to leap you're gonna have a lot of moves like that uh think about who is behind if it's investor driven if it's money driven if it's someone who's just trying to sell the company or if it's someone who's truly trying to 
help contractors and listen to you, not to them. There's so many companies and business these days, they are, you know, both ears to their investors and next move and capital and how much money they can make versus to their clients, how they can help you. Again, I work with companies who have my needs at best interest and not theirs. I'm, I don't want to work with broke companies. I want them to make money, but not at my expense. Because every time CRM company sells, you probably going to go through some hoops and you will not even know it early on. So do investigate who you're about to invest. On a side note, it might sound easy or not a lot of money early on because you know, $50, $60, $70 per user uh, for your organization might not sound like a lot of money, but it's monthly, it's every month. Today you might have five employees, five years from now you might have 50 and you're gonna keep paying that bill. So sign up with the CRM after thorough research. If you need my recommendation, I'm gonna put links below who I recommend. And if you need any assistance of me, if you want my advice on this topic, I would like to help you. My information also below. Comment, like if you like this content, ask a question, I read them, and I'll see you guys in the next video.